everybody, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. Um, I don't remember what happened last video because I recorded it about a week ago. So, uh, this is part three. Make sure to watch all the parts. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this game as much as I am right now. Another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Yes, I remember calling my... naming myself Daddy. And I'm not going to do any voices, because those were really wearing me out, and I was getting really dizzy very quickly. Hi, Daddy. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. Hey. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh? That, that's not like you at all! I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh? Why that, all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Uh... Sayori nervous, nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and let its contents spill into the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So, either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money. So that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry! And so that only leaves the one option! Ah, I give up! Don't make me feel guilty! If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Very funny, Craig. Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face her, is in her book, as always. Uh-huh! I, I wasn't listening or anything! I just... I was just... something in my book. Yuri! Tell Daddy to let me borrow some money! That... that's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. That is a lesson to all you kids out there. Make sure you only buy what you can afford. That means no spa no fancy sports cars. Get a hand-me-down car. Car that's not too old, not too new because you're probably going to wreck it anyway. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Ugh. Did I just... I, I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. 
I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That, that's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. Retribution. That! Ah! Still, coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> oh, excuse me. Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but, you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> <laughs> Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was... Uh, uh, a cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution! Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you, but then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> N Natsuki! That's so nice of you! I'm so happy! Sayori hugged. Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. Sayori. Sayori. Sayori suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue! <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate! Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy you shared this one with me. <laughs> Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Aw, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand. Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Oh! Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Hey, hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouth full, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. <laughs> Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes! Monica, can you tell Sayori- Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ah, where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular, after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. 
she's probably more desirable than any of us combined. <laughs> that's true. Excuse me? Suddenly, the door swings open. <laughs> sorry! I I'm super sorry! Ah! Oh. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all! You're so strong-willed! boyfriend What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind that. What well, held you up, anyway? Ah, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I, I, I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once... Maybe once I get a bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Daddy. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah! I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Sorry, dry mouth. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot lately. And I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So, I, I, I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I choose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. Excuse me. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Did anyone notice that piano just started playing? It is not long before Natsuki comes up to me expectantly. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry, I kept my promise. I pulled the first volume of Parquet, Parquet. Gotta drink more water. It's actually a vodka. No, actually, it's just water. I pulled the first volume of Parfait Girls out of my bag. Natsuki takes it from my hands, then quickly turns it over, presumably to check for wrinkles. Hey, I'm not that careless. I handle ma manga all the time, you know. I keep on trying to call it manga, but that's wrong. It's manga. Ugh. I just wanted to make sure. Can you blame me for being paranoid? I don't give people my manga every day, you know. That's true. I don't blame you. Well, anyway, let me put this one back. I'm gonna get the next one, okay? Natsuki makes her way to the closet. I follow. So you're gonna tell me everything you thought, right? Where did this volume leave off again? I forget. 
Uh, the chapter ended when, uh, Minori and Alice found... Mon Monica! Natsuki's voice resonates out from inside the closet. Huh? I peer inside. All of Natsuki's books are lined up on the top shelf. Did you move my manga again? Oh, sorry, sorry. The teacher got mad at me for taking up so much space in her closet. So I had to move some stuff around and clean up a bit. Up a little bit. It's all still there. I just had to organize it a bit. Ah! The top shelf is hot. It is far above Natsuki's head. She makes a futile hop, trying to figure out how to reach her manga. Jeez! This is so inconvenient! I'm moving on! These all back down. There's plenty of room on these shelves. And besides, they're really pretty to look at when they're all lined up. Why would you waste that on the top shelf? Ah, uh, Natsuki. There's a stool on the wall there. In the closet, there's a collapsible stool that's hanging on the wall. If you want, I can reach up there and hand them to you. I can get them myself. Natsuki grabs the stool from the wall and unfolds it. You think I'm too short or something? Uh, I mean... I knew it! Well, you know what? Just watch me. Natsuki hops on the stool, which ends up being a little wobbly because of its collapsible design. Uh, uh. Careful! I know what I'm doing! Standing on the stool, Natsuki's fingertips reach the top shelf. The stool would be enough for me to easily grab the books, but Natsuki is being stubborn as usual. Uh, uh. Natsuki uses her fingers to scoot one of the smaller books to the edge of the shelf. See? The box suddenly tips. Natsuki barely catches it before it falls to the ground. The stool wobbles. Wah, wah! Losing balance, Natsuki hops off the stool. Thankfully, she was able to stay on her feet. She holds the box triumphantly. Th there! Having almost fell, Natsuki is a bit shaken up. Jeez. No need to prove yourself to me. There's no way you'll be able to get the bigger boxes like that. I can reach them, so just... I said I can do it. I don't want your help, okay? <sighs> I'm gonna get a chair, so just hang on. Natsuki forces her way past me out of the closet. Oof. Ow. My fucking shoulder, Natsuki! The classroom chairs have the desks attached, so they're too inconvenient to fit into the closet. Ah! Ha! Natsuki trots over to the teacher's desk, which has a computer chair behind it. She rolls it on its wheels back over to the closet. Ah! Ah! It's a little dangerous, since the chair swivels and rolls. But I've already learned my lesson, so I keep my mouth shut. Yes. Natsuki climbs onto the chair, then slowly balances onto her feet. Since she, re since she refuses my help, I take a seat with my bag against the side of the doorway and simply watch. My bag is also full of potatoes. Baked potatoes. 
for when I get hungry. Aha! There we go! See? I can easily do it now! Natsuki grabs a stack of manga and bends down to put it on the shelf below. What? 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 The chair swivels. Natsuki catches herself on the shelf. What are you doing? Can you at least hold the chair steady instead of sitting and doing nothing? Who was it who told me not to help? Yeah, yeah, I gotcha. I hold the chair while Natsuki reaches back up. I can... I can almost see up her skirt! Good. I force myself to turn away. Natsuki seriously did think this through. Once she realizes, I'll be dead! Ha! Natsuki wraps her arms around the parfait girl's box set. Easily the largest one on the shelf. Uh, Abby! Hey, Daddy! <laughs> I, I don't think I can bend down without falling. Hurry up and take this one. Eh? But then I have to let go of the chair. That's fine! Just for a second! Oh, Jesus, excuse me. Hurry up! Alright! Let me just stand up. I slowly release my grip from the chair. What do you mean, stand up? Natsuki looks down at me. Why are you all the way back? Eh? Natsuki looks like she just realized something. But she'll lose her balance if she moves. Natsuki, the box! What? What are you looking at? You're trying to look at my... my, my. Natsuki's legs shake. I, I'm not! I was just... Natsuki, don't try to move! Just give me the box! You... you perv! You set me up! Go away! Get out! What? I'll do it myself! Ah! Ah! The chair suddenly swivels behind Natsuki's feet. Natsuki! Kill! The scene turns into chaos in a split second. The chair flies from under Natsuki's feet. Frantically, I try to catch her. The box topples out of her hands and the books go flying. I got you! Crash! The full force of Natsuki's body against me throws me to the ground. A whole box... Bunch of books, pelt me in the face! Ow, 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 motherfucker! Natsuki tries to shield herself with her own arms as her face lands straight onto my chest. Ugh. My right arm and back seriously felt the impact. <laughs> Slowly, Natsuki comes to her senses. She presses her arms straight into me to prop herself up. Eh? Natsuki seems to realize that it's not the floor that's beneath her. Rouse, grab! Gah! A fist pounds into my chest. Natsuki then hoists herself to her feet. What were you thinking, you sicko? Everything okay over here? I heard a loud noise. Monica suddenly peers in. Monica, see what happens when you put the manga on the top shelf? Are you trying to kill your club members or something? Jeez. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, and one more thing. It seems like your most recent club member is a total pervert. So I hope you're happy. Uh, I didn't. Somehow, it's impossible for me to explain this whole bizarre situation to Monica. I didn't do anything, I swear. I, 
I know, I know. Don't worry. Monica says that quietly to me. Looks like I'm off the hook. Oh no! I, I... Huh? I look down. Natsuki is kneeling on the floor, holding one of the books that are scattered all over. There's a large diagonal crease. Diagonal crease along the page that she's desperately trying to smooth out. Oh, it must have it must have landed on the page. Natsuki tries a bit more to fix the crease, but she can't get it out. Suddenly she gives up and slams the book shut, then throws it to the floor. Instead of continuing to la yell, she just lowers her head. <laughs> Natsuki, are, are you? No! Natsuki's voice squeaks. I see tears on her face. Uh, I'll, I'll help get the creases out, okay? It's partly my fault, so... Natsuki shakes her head, still looking down. No! I don't even care that much. I'm just having a really bad day today. Natsuki sobs again. <laughs> I, I, I didn't mean to take it out on you. I really didn't mean to. It, 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 it's fine. Is there anything you want to talk about? Natsuki shakes her head. Just... Every day! It's so hard! I, I just want to come to the club, Ben. Natsuki falls silent again. I can't press her, so I can only do what I know how to do. Alright. Well, I'll help clean this up, and I'll move the rest of your manga for you. Ah. Ah! I pick up volume two of Parfait Girls. We'll set this one aside. This'll help cheer you up a bit, right? We can get started on it once I'm done here. Natsuki looks up with her glossy eyes. Her lip quivers. You're... You're really nice to me. Eh? Huh? That sounds really strange coming from Natsuki. I didn't expect it at all. Well... Well... I'm just treating you like a friend, you know? Natsuki lowers her head and stifles another sob. I'm not sure what happened to her today, but being nice is the least I could do. The next couple of minutes are silent between us as I begin gathering the scattered books. I make sure to slip them into the box in their correct order. After a little bit, Natsuki starts helping. It isn't long before we're done, and I hoist the box onto the shelf where Natsuki wanted to put it. Then, I get on the stool and quickly finish moving the rest of her books from the top shelf. Alright, that should do it. I hop off the stool. Pop! Natsuki averts her gaze. Thanks! <laughs> it's nothing. Natsuki is holding the volume I set aside in her hands. All right, I'm ready. Good. Even if you weren't, I'd make you anyway. You're taking responsibility for what you said. Think about cheering me up. If you insist. We sit in the same spot as last time, and I open the second volume. Natsuki's mood quickly improves, laughing and pointing things out to me. She's surprisingly sharp, making note of a lot of subtle, repeated jokes and background elements. In the end, I'm pretty impressed by how everything ties together in this manga. I guess Natsuki has good taste after all. After some time, Monica gets our attention as usual, and it's time to share poems again. Guess I'll be holding on to this for now. Yep. Even though you sound... Even... Even you... Even you sound more enthusiastic this time. Well, I'm starting to get into it, you know? <laughs> Told you! Yeah, yeah. I return to my seat in 
and slipped the box into my bag, which is still full of baked potatoes and lots of Smarties. Got to keep the big brain going, you know? Who should I share my poem to first? We're going to start with Natsuki. Natsuki reads my poem. She keeps glancing at me and back at the poem. By now, she must have read it more than once. Hmm? Is it that bad? No! No, it's not! It's good! It's really good, okay? There! I said it! Ugh! This wasn't supposed to happen at all! Why can't you just be bad at this? My poems are supposed to impress you, not the other way around! You're trying to impress me? Obviously! You think I'd let you enjoy Yuri's writing more than mine? Give me a break! Well, in that case, what's the problem with me trying to impress you? I'll tell you, you... Natsuki's face freezes, like she just realized something. You, you, you! You're trying to impress me? Natsuki vigorously scans her eyes over my poem one more time. Then... The poem slips out of her hands and flutters to the floor. I have to use the bathroom! I have to pee! Red face, red face, Natsuki quickly walks out of the room. Hey, Daddy, did something happen to Natsuki? I just saw her rush out like that. You didn't do anything terrible, did you? N no! I just told her that my voice gets caught in my throat. There's no way I could tell Monica that I'm trying to impress Natsuki. Mm. Monica sees the poem lying on the floor and swiftly picks it up. She reads through it, her face not, her smile not fading from her face. Her face not fading away from her smile. Her dead me. I see. You wrote this for Natsuki, didn't you? Uh, I mean, not really. In fact, didn't she like your poem a lot the other day, too? I'm surprised you know her taste so well already. Are you sure you're not cheating, Daddy? Cheating? What do you mean by that? Never mind, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't understand Monica's joke at all. Anyway, how do you think Natsuki feels about you? Oh, you don't need to answer that. It was just something for you to think about. Hey! Natsuki comes up and snatches the poem out of Monica's hand. Neither of us had noticed her re-enter the classroom. Did you read this, Monica? Uh, uh, of course. I liked it. Uh, you should really stop reading things that aren't for you, you know? You have a bad habit of doing that. Eh? But, but, Daddy wrote this poem. And we're supposed to share it with everyone, right? Eh. Natsuki freezes. She apparently forgot that my poem is technically for everyone to read. Okay, well, I think Daddy is done sharing this poem with everyone. It's not like anyone would want to read this anyway. In fact, I'm just gonna hold on to this. If you insist. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Like what? <laughs> Never mind! Ah, uh, Natsuki. I'll give you the poem, but that's still not fair to Sayori. She hasn't gotten to read it yet. 
myself? What? Well, I guess... Well... I guess Daddy is right, Natsuki. It's not fair if you don't let everyone finish just reading it. Fine! Natsuki returns my palm. It's not like she's gonna like it, though. Anyway, read my poem now. And no, I won't let you keep it. This is my only copy. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wiggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg real bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The whole world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm going to tell everyone. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone who agreed that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course, it's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out, they'll make they'd make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares whatever what someone likes? As long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely, definitely right. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. You know, I'm glad that you can appreciate this kind of writing. I mean, I know I was talking about that yesterday, but I've been, well, I've been enjoying sharing my writing with you, so, so consider yourself lucky, okay? <laughs> well, thanks for being honest. What's that supposed to mean? I'm always honest! Jeez. Just look forward to tomorrow, too, okay? Alright, I will. Poem, Sayori. <clears throat> Sorry, there is not enough water in that. Oh my goodness! This is so good, Daddy! Eh? I love it! Especially after yesterday's poem. Uh... You're too honest sometimes, Yuri. No, but really! I want to put this on my wall. Can I? Yuri, you must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. My jaw just cracked. Well, maybe that maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. <laughs> Jeez. I'm 
sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Maybe even Natsuki's. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Eh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know? So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's a daddy poem! And it makes me feel extra special. Like I can feel your feelings in it. Sayori hugs the sheet against her chest. You, you're so weird, Sayori. <laughs> well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure if that's how it works exactly. And again, I guess conveying, conveying, conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Aw, uh, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet! Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Huh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet! Yeah! I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes, when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug and make a nice happy rainbow! Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Eh? It is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all! Thanks, Daddy! I'm seriously regretting calling myself Daddy. I should write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Bottles. I pop off my scalp like a lid of like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all of my dreams. Little Well, hopefully you guys saw that. Ugh! Holy crap. Sayori, did you really write this? Yeah, you guys might have to go to another person's playthrough of this game and figure it out. Read it yourself. Of course I did! Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best, the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot! And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently! I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, uh, thanks. I feel like I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing is the best. I'm going to keep writing until I die! <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. 
Leori's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Okay, Yuri. Um, are you still mad at me? Huh? For disrespecting Natsuki yesterday. Because reading this poem, now I know why you got mad at me. Because you... You prefer her writing over mine! That, that's not really true. Meaning when I disrespected her, I disrespected you too, didn't I? Oh no. Yuri, you might be reading into this a little too much. How could I be so stupid? I always let these things happen. Whenever I think before I speak, I just come off as awkward and unlikable. Welcome to my world, Yuri. But if I speak without thinking, the things I want to keep inside come out and make people hate me. So please, don't force yourself to be around me. I know this is what Monica wants, but it's not fair to you when you can be enjoying your time with Natsuki or Sayori. And Sayori. Yuri. Please. It makes it easier for me if you don't express any concern. Besides, I have my books with me. That's all I need. Yuri smiles sadly and puts her head down on her desk. I'm frustrated. I don't hate her, but it's as if she's not capable of listening to me over her own thoughts. I sigh to myself. All I can do is accept that that's how she is. If she wants to be left alone, then I have no choice but to abide to that request. request. Oh man, we didn't get to read Yuri's poem. Oh. Monica, read Monica's poem and then that'll be the end of the episode. Hi again, Daddy. That was kind of silly with Natsuki earlier, wasn't it? I'm glad the two of them have been getting along so well. That's one way of putting it. Anyway, I already read your poem, but you can go ahead and read mine now. I like the way this turned out, so I hope you do it too. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise. Noise, noise, noise. It won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust, an endless poem of meaningless. Load me, Jimmy. Load me. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? Ah ha 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 Laughing has subsided. I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing you I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of a poem. Of the poem. 
It's almost like magic! The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak all over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression or of a feeling. Or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. Don't forget to save your game. Don't forget to save your gear. Don't forget to save your game. 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 Oh, I can already tell something bad's gonna happen. You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected will happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? Ha 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 ha! That's my advice for the day. Thanks for listening. Okay, everyone. We're all ready. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned for today. So, if everyone could come sit at the front of the room, we will, we will be back in the next video! So, that's the end of this episode. We'll find out what happens in the next episode. Alright. This is going to be one of the longer videos, so set aside some time after work or whatever, or whenever, and I'll see you guys in the next video.